We begin at the Palace Cafe in New Orleans. It's one of the properties owned by the Brennan family of Commander's Palace fame. Chef Robert Bruce offers a crab meat Napoleon. Then from one of San Francisco's great seafood restaurants, Aqua, Chef George Marone does an entree of ahi tuna, foie gras, and portobello mushroom. Dessert comes from suburban Chicago. Chef Gabriel Vitti's namesake restaurant is the site for a confection called Croustillon. Note the use of a chocolate ice cube to create a liquid center. At the time of taping, the executive chef at the Palace Cafe in downtown New Orleans was Robert Bruce. He joined the restaurant in 1995 after having worked under Paul Prudhomme and Emeril Lagasse at Commander's Palace. In 1997, the Palace Cafe won an Ivy Award. Here is the appetizer, sweet potato crab meat Napoleon. What we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna do the sweet potato and crab meat Napoleon with choupic creme fraiche. Okay, we have our fancy little mandolin here, which says watch your fingers because it is very sharp. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the blade so that it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. The thinner it is, the better off. And we're going to carefully, watching our fingers, slide the sweet potatoes down. Check for the thickness. See, that's way too thick. So you got to check it. Make sure you're doing it right because you don't want to you don't want to do it all and then realize you messed it up and have to start over again, okay? So I think this might be good right there. See, nice and thin. Slice about six or so, carefully. All right. And then on our sheet pan, we're going to lay them out. Uh, our oven has been preheated to 300 degrees. And we're going to take some clarified butter here, also known as ghee, uh, and we're going to brush the uh, sweet potatoes. Okay. Season them. Salt and white pepper. All right. Then we're going to turn them over. Bake for about 45 minutes. Now the ravigo sauce. And we're going to add egg yolks. Put one egg yolk in there. So there you go. We're going to whisk it a bit. Add to that a pinch of salt, pinch of white pepper, some Dijon mustard from the Dijon region of France. And we're going to whisk that momentarily. So now we're going to drizzle our egg yolk, our uh, olive oil in. We're going to drizzle our olive oil into the egg yolks slowly at first because it will break. And if it breaks, you need to start all over again. Uh, this is extra virgin olive oil that I'm using right here, infused with a little bit of garlic. Uh, you can use whatever kind of oil you want, it really doesn't matter, you can use vegetable oil. As it starts to thicken, you want to thin it out a tad with some lemon juice, which is going to thin it out. You just want to add a little bit of lemon juice at first, so you get a nice little emulsion there. Okay, We can tighten it up a little bit more with the olive oil. So you want to add a little olive oil until it gets tight. Pour it on the side, incorporate it in. As it starts to thicken up, you want to thin it out with a little bit of lemon juice. So you alternate the lemon juice and the olive oil. To that emulsion, we're going to add some tarragon. Okay. Season it with salt and pepper again. To this mixture right here, we're going to add our jumbo lump crab meat. This is from the, uh, the back fin of the Louisiana blue crab. It's an Epicurean's delight. My favorite crab meat in the world. Absolutely. We're going to toss that in with our vinaigrette, our emulsion. Take our rubber spatula, fold it around gently. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to reserve this. Now. I've taken liberty of making some creme fraiche, which is basically one part buttermilk to four parts heavy cream. It sits out overnight at about 100 degrees, and then it turns into a, kind of a cheese-like custard almost. Okay, We're going to use this to garnish our Napoleon. 
So what I have is the creme fraiche, and to that I'm going to add, and the shoe pig caviar comes from a fish known as the cypress trout, uh, which is a uh, big ugly fish, looks like a big gar. Um, and uh, it's, it's a local product, it's very good, I love this stuff. We're going to toss that in there, gently fold it around so as not to break up the yolks, too I mean break up the eggs too much. If you break the eggs up, it starts to color everything kind of a darker purple. So we just want to fold it in a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove our sweet potatoes out of the oven, which uh, are nice and brown now. Okay. So we're going to carefully pick them up, drain them on the towel. We're going to do a Napoleon of four layers. And we're going to place our sweet potato down. A dab of creme fraiche secures the slice. A little bit of the crab meat on top of that. Whoops. OK, if you can use a spoon, it's best. It's supposed to touch in your food. You don't want to touch it too much. Another layer of sweet potatoes. Carefully, so as not to make a mess. Oops. Okay. This is a little fragile. Another layer of sweet potatoes. This is where it's getting a little bit scarier. A little bit harder to do. Got to be focused. Put a little bit less crab meat on every layer. And then we'll top it off with another piece of sweet potato. Take some, uh, some a brunoise of red onions. We're going to put those down on the plate down here. It's fine dice, it's a Brunois in French. And then we're going to put some chives down here also. We're going to take our choupic creme fraiche, and we're going to put some on top of that there, all right? And then we're going to kind of put some around in the garnishes, okay? Like so. And then to that, we're going to add a few more chopped chives on the top, a few more red onions on top. We're going to garnish it with some small capers, non pareil capers. And the final garnish is going to be some boiled egg yolk and some boiled egg white. And all I'm going to do is hold my grater above it and grate the egg yolks over it right onto the plate. This you want to do at the last moment. and. Uh, also, the egg whites. This is all you want to do at the last moment. Then you have a very festive dish, which would be called a sweet potato and blue crab Napoleon with chupic creme fraiche. The entree comes from Aqua in San Francisco. The chef proprietor at taping time was George Marone. He has since left. After graduating from the CIA, he worked for heavy hitters, Charlie Palmer in New York and Brad Ogden at Campton Place in the Bay Area. Chef Marone offers ahi tuna with foie gras. I'm gonna do a tuna and foie gras, the Pinot Noir sauce today, and this is our signature dish here at Aqua. And, um, this is a uh, Hudson Valley foie gras from New York State, a uh, whole lobe right here. We're going to portion that up for you and show you how we do that here at the restaurant. slices of foie gras are cut. The chef will score them, which is more for decoration than any cooking necessity. Have it 
uh, portioned out here. Uh, two and a half ounce medallions and about an ounce and a half pieces of foie gras. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is grill our portobello, portobello mushrooms. And uh, this is them in their raw state. And it's a nice, thick, meaty mushroom. Uh, what we do here at the restaurant is marinate them in olive oil, white wine vinegar, salt, pepper, uh, garlic, and shallots. But a very meaty olive oil, which goes a uh, very meaty mushroom because it goes with the dish. Tuna is on the meaty side, foie gras, of course, is duck liver. Apply a generous amount of salt. Since they're so thick that they're going to, you're going to uh, take a lot of salt to give them some flavor. A little bit of fresh cracked pepper. See how thick they are, they're almost like steaks themselves. And okay. Try to salt very evenly. Spinach is wilted in some olive oil. Spinach will do over a high, high heat. Mushrooms, you don't want to heat too high, again, because you, you want a little bit of that toasty grill flavor, but you don't want to burn your mushrooms. Okay, we take our tuna, oil it lightly, again season, season the foie gras. Pepper. Okay. The tuna is grilled and a potato pancake is cut. Foie gras is seared in a trace of olive oil. Okay, take our tuna off while it's rare. The grilled portobello is diced and will go into the sauce. Now we're going to add our Pinot Noir demi glace sauce to that. It's made with veal stock, Pinot Noir wine, finished with the portobello mushrooms. Our potato pancake on the bottom, sauteed spinach on top.
Chef Gabriel Vitti's credits are nothing to sneeze at. After graduating from the CIA, he worked for Joel Robuchon in Paris, Freddy Girardet in Switzerland, and Michel Girard in France. He also worked at Carlo's in Highwood. Here is his carefully constructed croustillon. The chocolate liquid center is started with boiling water. Okay, once the water's boiling, you can add in your dried ingredients. This is powdered milk, followed with sugar and cocoa powder. The mixture is whisked over heat. Mix very well. And pass through a chinois in case there's any clumps or anything. Now we're ready to add it into our ice cuber. The chocolate mixture is frozen. Meanwhile, the pastry cream is started with two cups of milk and the seeds from one vanilla bean. It goes over heat and is brought to a boil. Egg yolks are combined with sugar, then dried gelatin and flour will be added and mixed until smooth and thick. When the milk boils, you can add it into your egg and dried ingredients mixture. Make sure you get everything. The mixture goes back into the pan and is mixed continuously. And put that back onto high heat, mixing it very well all the time. The mixture is removed to a bowl and will be set aside. It will thicken as it cools. It will be combined with Italian meringue, which is simple syrup heated to 120 degrees and combined with beaten egg whites. When you're adding the Italian meringue to the pastry cream, try to be as gentle as possible so you don't break it down and a lot of air in it. The pastry cream is piped into buttered ring molds, each containing a disc of chocolate sponge cake. Let's point with your chocolate. Put it right into the center. Try not to hit the bottom with the chocolate cube. And 
and then adding a little bit more onto the top. You can build them up a little bit higher because as they sit in the refrigerator, they'll lose a little bit of their form, a little bit of the air, and they'll sink down a little bit into the mold. A little bit of powdered sugar on top. Thank you. 